Welcome to Butterflies, an intro. This is a video I've made for the College and Evolution field course, but should be of interest to anyone who wants to learn a little bit more about butterflies. Of course, this will be very Hong Kong focused. This is a Paleopolites from Llama Island, as you can tell by the smokestacks in the background. Basically, the goal of the video will be to check out some cool videos, learn a little bit about butterflies, what is a butterfly, what makes a butterfly, and the butterfly families. We'll begin by discussing the butterfly life cycle. And to do that, I want to go to Cameroon in Central Africa and talk a little bit about research I've done there. primarily focused on this species. This is by Cyclist Dorothea. This is a butterfly that we've been researching as a means of understanding climate change impacts on butterflies. The work we've done on by Cyclist Dorothea has largely been done by a postdoctoral researcher in my group, uh, Michel Dongmo. Here he is in action in the field, capturing butterflies in the forests of Cameroon. So we'll use Bicyclist Dorothea to explore the life cycle of a butterfly. And it all, of course, starts with the egg. Uh, once the egg hatches, they become larvae, caterpillars. Now, the entire job of the caterpillar is to eat, in this case, grass, plants. And they eat and eat and eat and just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And they go through different stages or instars. And as you can see, this one looks a little bit different, is also bigger. And as they become bigger, they go through the instars, um, four or five, sometimes six, until they get to the stage where they're just about to become pupa or the chrysalis. And it's within this stage, the pupal stage, that the metamorphosis takes place. There's an entire reorganization of all the tissue and cellular structure, the tissues and everything becomes reorganized until the butterfly is ready to emerge as an adult. And so of course, once the adults are emerged, they go and they look for mates and they go through the process all over again. Here is an emergence from the chrysalis. That was a Graphium agamemnon, not a bicyclist. But once they emerge, they mate, they lay their eggs, and the whole life cycle starts all over again. So what is a butterfly? There's been a lot of research on butterflies. We know a lot about them because they're so spectacular in their diversity and their colors and everything else. And so this is one of the more recent evolutionary histories described of butterflies. There are over 18,000 species. There are seven families. And we know that most of them diversified, and most butterflies diversified in the late Cretaceous and following the Cretaceous. You can see here the different colors correspond to the different butterfly families, which we'll go into uh, in, in more detail later on in the video. But now it's time for my favorite game, butterfly or moth. So the game's very easy. I'll show you a butterfly or a moth. Is it a butterfly or a moth? Well, this is a moth. You can tell by the feathery antenna. You know it's a moth sort of intuitively, and this is indeed a moth. Butterfly or moth, this is a butterfly. Uh, you can tell by the colors. You can tell by the, the non-feathery antenna. Is this a butterfly or moth? This is actually a butterfly. This is a Sparidae, which we'll go into more detail in a moment. And this is a moth. So it's not always so easy to tell what's a butterfly and what's a moth. There's also a misconception that moths are ugly. 
But this is a good example of a moth that's quite beautiful. I like moths. You should too. Is this a butterfly or a moth? This is a moth. This is a Dysphania moth. A uh, very tricky one in Hong Kong. A lot of people think it's a butterfly just because it's colorful. And this is Raj. This is my cat. Not a butterfly, nor is it a moth. But he's a good cat. So let's look into butterflies and moths a little in a little more detail. So here you can see that butterflies are really just moths. So they're well in the middle of this evolutionary history, this long evolutionary history of moths. So moths tend to have feathery antenna, they tend to have large bodies and open wings when resting, but there's so many exceptions that these really aren't very good rules for distinguishing butterflies and moths. Really, butterflies are just moths that fly during the day. And not even all butterflies fly during the day, which we'll discuss in a minute. In fact, there are 160,000 moth species in the world known, uh, relative to 18,000 butterfly species known. And in Hong Kong, there are approximately 2,000 species of moths, relative to about 250 butterfly species. So moths are incredibly diverse. Now we'll talk about butterfly families. It's useful to know the butterfly families, because if you know the butterfly families, you can identify an individual by the family, and then you can figure out what the species is. Hong Kong has 250 butterfly species uh, relative to the UK, which only has about 60 species. And the first species we'll look at is Hesperidae. So Hesperidae tend to have small wings. They tend to be quite stout. And sometimes they have these orange and brown colors. And they can also be easily mistaken for butterflies by the amateur who doesn't know any better. This is Ampita vergata. Here's a Pelopitas species with its cool proboscis, its tongue. And then this is a Babassus, Odipodia, which is a very colorful Hesperidae. So they're not all brown and, and ugly. Some of them are, are actually quite pretty. So those are the Hesperidae or the skipper butterflies. And then we look at the Papillionidae. The Papillionidae are the large butterflies you see in Hong Kong, very common. They often have tails. They're often black uh, with a little bit of color sometimes. This is a rare Biasa confusa in Hong Kong, uh, but very common in terms of the form, this black form. In this case, there's a lot of red, which you don't see in most of the common papilios. This is Papilio paris. This is a fairly common species, which you might see around the Hong Kong U campus with those really cool blue warning colorations. There's several common species of Papillionidae in Hong Kong. They're very common in the, the urban areas and you'll certainly see some when you're out. And here's a dueling Papilio protonor and a Papilio polites. Next are the Pieridae. So the Pieridae tend to be medium. Uh, they're also called the yellows, and they're often yellow and white, true to their, their common name. Uh, about 22 species in Hong Kong, about seven are very common. And they tend to be very fast flying. This is a Catacilia pomona. This is one of the more common species you'll see, particularly around urban areas. You'll see a big yellow butterfly flying around trees. Um, that's very likely to be this, this one of these species. Actually caught this species right next to the Kaduri Biological Sciences Building and then released it. It was stuck in that tunnel, which some of you might be familiar with next to the building. And this is Eurema hecabi. Eurema is another very common species, which you'll see often low to the ground often along walking along trails you'll often see many of them in groups do be careful there are a number of urema species and some of them can be difficult to distinguish from one another the next species we'll look at are the lycinidae the lycinidae are, tend to be very small or smaller than the other families in particular 
They're also called the blues. Uh, many of them are blue. Not all of them are blue. Uh, but that gives them their common name of the blues. The Lysinator are very difficult, are very easy to miss, I should say. Uh, if you're not paying attention and you don't know any better, you'll miss them. But as you can see here, um, they're actually quite beautiful. This is a Neopithecips of uh, Zalmora. And these are two that are engaged in uh, a courtship. So in fact, the blue in this case, and in most cases the Lysina Day, is actually on the top, the dorsal part. And this is Celestrina lavendularis. This is a group of them. You can see their tongues are out. They're extracting water or resources or something from the ground, as you can see. Very common activity with the Lysina Day. And this is Tajuria maculata. You can see in this case, and in many cases the Lysina Day, they have these these tails coming from the end, um, which can be thought of as false heads. You can also kind of see there's that sort of back, there's two-headed in some, some ways. This is RTP Eryx, which also has the so-called false head. I actually had a summer research fellow, uh, Megan Lowe, who worked with me and, and did try to figure out what was going on with these false heads. We don't really know what's happening with these false heads. This is a good research topic to explore further. See if this has some kind of anti-predation um, function. We, we don't really know. It may, it may, but maybe it doesn't. And the last family, not the last family, sorry. Uh, the next family are the Nymphalidae. There's so many butterfly families. Um, within the Nymphalidae, you have the Danaeani and you also have the Satyrini. Now, the Danaeani used to be their own family, the Danaeidae, and the Satyrini used to be their own family, the Satyridae. Um, but they're actually all within the Nymphalidae, which are medium, many different patterns. They're also called the brush-footed butterflies because, as you can see here, you can only count four. In fact, the other two feet are in the front, and they're, they're modified, and that's the common feature of all Nymphalidae. This is Faunus humus. This is a very common species uh, in the country parks of Hong Kong. And they often found on the floor feeding on uh, rotting fruit. And you can see in this case, they're, they're all really loving the fruit. And this is typical of the Nymphalidae, sort of medium-sized, uh, varied color patterns. And this is a Danaeani, which is also within the Nymphalidae family. This is Parentica alleglia. And this is the same subfamily as the monarch butterflies. This is a, a cluster, an overwintering cluster, a video I took on Llama in December um, a number of years ago. And you can see there are many of them. And another great research question, why are they doing this? What's the, the function of this? This is a recent video I took of a, a group of uh, Danaeani. And then the last subfamily are the Satyrini. This is Michaelesis minius. You'll learn more in a, from Fung's research on Michaelesis. The last family we have in Hong Kong are the Riodinids, the Riodinidae, uh, which are, there are only three species, there are only two that are common. They're small and reddish. This is a Zemerus flagus, which is a common species which you're very likely to see. And the last family, which there are none in Hong Kong, that's the Hedilidae. These are actually nocturnal butterflies. There are only a few species and they're all in America. And for many years, these were thought to be moths, but they are, in fact, butterflies. So with that, I'll end with just some interesting notes, uh, a section which I'm going to call uh, Lepidoptera miscellaneous. These are things to think about when you're out. Now that you know all the butterfly families, now that you know what a butterfly is, you can go out, you can see some of these, 
and you can observe their behavior. So this is actually a group of mud puddling butterflies in Hong Kong. Uh, do you know what family these are? So these are all the papillionids. See papillopolites, Graphium sarpedon, and some other species. And again, what are they doing here? Probably acquiring resources of some sort. Ultimately, they're doing acquiring resources so they can mate, lay eggs, and then start that life cycle again. This is another group of mud puddling butterflies. This is actually from Cameroon. You can see some Lycenids, you can see some Nymphalids, you can see some Pierids, and you can see some Papillionids. Um, again, one of the great things about butterflies is how conspicuous they are, how beautiful they are, and this makes them a sort of indicator of insect species, because people like them. This is a Babasis gamata, freshly emerged, and you can see it kind of shaking and shivering. This might be a thermoregulatory response. And this is a moth. This is a macroglossum. But you can also see something else. Praying mantis, which did not, in fact, strike the microglossum. Close call. Poor praying mantis. So that's it. I hope you learned something about butterflies. I hope you know butterfly what butterflies are. You can identify some of the families. You know some of the facts. And I encourage you to go out and learn more.